Thank you, everyone. Hola a todos. <laughs> Hello, my name is Heron. And g'day. Uh, so I'm from Catalyst IT, Australian team, obviously based in Australia. Um, and if you haven't already noticed, um, based on the, the, the title of the abstract, uh, there's quite a lot of words here. Um, so it's probably good that I'm starting from this early and I'll try and get through it quick. I might need a bit of a cracking pace and there may not be that much in it, so you have been warned. Um, I'll try and keep it uh, at a reasonable pace. Lots of uh, celebrations in the hall. So who am I? I'm James Williams. I'm a Senior Technical Manager at Catalyst IT. Um, I have a background in higher education, mainly tertiary institutions and universities. Um, so that will be seen in some of my basic assumptions around uh, what I, the integrations I'll be talking about. Although as education landscapes are changing, um, a lot of the ideas around user enrolment, uh, user authentication enrolments and uh, integrations um, is moving more to sort of smaller short course and micro credential teachings, um, which means that I'm sort of also trying to make this applicable to small organizations and uh, people who are maybe even just starting to use Moodle for some of this. Um, so if that's, uh, that's, that's the direction I'll be taking, um, it might start from a large university focus, but it will come back hopefully down to a small level and then I'll expand again for some ideas. So I'm gonna aim with a simple beginning provide a bit of a high-level breakdown about what students, teachers, and admins do, a quick uh, drive past some of the complexity, hopefully without getting sucked in to the complexity, um, and then I will bring the focus back to basics um, around smaller cohorts. Um, I'll try and get some dots between some of the Moodle components and how they fit together, uh, and walk through some of the integration options plugins, some challenges, pros and cons, um, and then hopefully just show you a couple of, a list of options, a list of plugins, uh, resources you can use for uh, getting yourself up to speed and, and where you can look for more help um, on that journey. So I suppose start with what do we already know? And know is dubious here. Learning learn enrollment processing is or was painful for some of us. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. Um, Third-party systems integration is difficult, time-consuming to build, often both. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. Um, it's certainly getting better um, as tools evolve. Um, but the applications or the implementations, to, to give a different meaning, uh, can differ due to different types of users, such as authentication types, uh, different types of courses, such as whether you plan to have one Moodle course with content that you reuse with st different student cohorts coming in and out of the same course, or whether you roll over that Moodle course to multiple copies of that course with the same content and different cohorts coming in and out of those cohorts. Um, and of course, there are different ways of getting students into those courses, um, different enrollment plugins and methods to enroll them, and obviously their integrations to automate that. Um, moving forward. <coughs> Excuse me. So a simple beginning. The student journey. Sorry, not again. No, very, very high level. I'm not going to talk about the student journey. But obviously, you've got enrollment and payment. Uh, you get access, students get access to the course. They learn and study through the course to build their skills. They demonstrate their intended learning outcomes through assessment, usually. Uh, and then they obtain confirmation or credit to progress the next course or complete their, their short course with some kind of credit uh, to the institution and or a certificate of some kind to demonstrate that. The teacher's story, we can't forget about them, very important, and their journey starts before the student, usually, with course design and course approval processes. Content creation, sometimes these are all mixed in together. Then teaching, and more teaching, and then marking, and more marking, and marking, and yet more marking, depending on whether you're leveraging the, some of the fantastic quiz and question bank functionality in Moodle 4.0. Thank you, Safa, um, and Nathan, and all the other contributors uh, on those projects. Um, and then obviously admin, 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 and more admin, um, which unfortunately tends to be increasing for some of our educators. Um, it's rather an unfortunate uh, trend that uh, I've certainly seen and heard about. 
Then the life of an admin, as we slip into very loose terminology here, could be a user, could be an admin staff, could be an integration an admin system, but just generally you've got the course list, website or content information, might be a handbook system, or you have staff that receive calls, emails, or web contacts for form submissions and payment, if it's not through an automated system. You've got the creation of the courses themselves, the enrollment of students in the courses, publishing student grades, ratifying student progression, completion, and graduation through the system. Adding a dash of complexity, maybe stirring it, a bit of a sprinkle, uh, maybe a bit too much. Um, manual user enrollment management for these things in small organisations or large organisations, it tends to be, well, we'll just upload a CSV. We'll just, you know, stopgap solution in the short term, then we'll improve it. It's not scalable. If you're doing a good job, if you've got content that, that enrols people that you're trying to scale up or you've got a new offering, if that's good, that success comes with growth. And growth comes with edge cases and probability that there are going to be manual issues you have to work around. And it very, very quickly outstrips your staffing. Um, change of user details, um, late enrolments, unenrolments, ID updates. Even if you put deadlines around census dates, for example, in many universities, cannot enrol after census date, it still happens. Can't unenrol, it still happens because there are always even fixes in the system where system integration went wrong or something went wrong. It just has to be fixed. It's not correct, just correct the record. So you think about automatic user enrollment management and user creation. It's still tricky. Uh, larger organizations with more infrastructure might manage user accounts with just a single database, multiple databases, integration with the LDAP, or SAML single sign-on, or OpenID Connect, which is growing in popularity more and more in recent years. Um, but they bring in other, other questions around you know, creating the accounts on the fly when they log in or pre-creating the accounts. Um, do you want to synchronize them in batch or have them coming in, um, you know, being pushed in, being pulled in? And the reality is they may actually exist in batch jobs and coexist with just-in-time user provisioning and creation or instant web service and API account creation. And timing can be a bit of a thing there. Um, so sometimes making sure that the account exists, the bulk synchronized ha synchronization has happened, the user can log in, it can be tricky because batch jobs take time to drop, take time to run, and just-in-time provisioning or APIs are instantaneous in real time. Can the user log in and be created on the fly or or not? Does, you know, can they log in before their account's created? Does it matter? Um, it depends on your scenario and your individual requirements in many cases, um, but it can have impacts if you've got downstream integration of other systems such as OpenID Connect, um, or you've got other systems using Moodle as your source of truth or your next hop, if you're having middleware buses and so on, to manage those things at an institutional level. Coming right back to sort of some components and options that are in Moodle, just to get people thinking about this, because it's as soon as you talk about integration at a larger scale or, or you're talking about the possibilities with sort of newer, newer, newer clients and newer people, it's very hard to think, oh, I've got authentication, but I can log in, but do I have an account and am I rolled? So just breaking it down, very, very basic level. You've got authentication, you've got enrollment. Um, user accounts can exist with, a, with an authentication type, uh, being a, a core Moodle plugin or a, or a third party plugin. Um, and having an account might let you log into Moodle, but not necessarily a course. And enrollment is obviously enrolling that user account into the course where the content other participants, depending on um, permissions for those roles and the capabilities. I'm not sure if that is very visible there, um, but that's just a quick view, list of the, some of the core authentication methods and plugins in Moodle. Um, uh, manual authentication, having users and passes inside the database through to you know, LDAP integration with LDAP servers or LTI authentication allowing use Moodle to act as a tool provider and have accounts created. And then so many more settings there which can very quickly come out of hand. And we've got enrollment plugins, again mainly core. You'll see some crossover here in terms of enrolling students into courses 
um, self-enrollment, similar to self-registration, and create the account and then self-enroll into, into the course itself, uh, or synchronizations. PayPal is an interesting one there, but um, I'm just going to move on. Then, obviously, single sign-on and SAML, Open ID Connect, become ubiquitous now. It's often it's not very new to many people. Some people might be getting it going, but these are the two main main players that we talk about. I do a shameless plug with the Auth SAML 2 plugin um, and Catalyst's name on there that everyone knows about. But it's a contribution for the community, and it's great to see people always you know, putting bug fixes and things in. It's great to really build on um, everyone else's work and keep those things going. And then there are web service APIs. This is a screenshot actually from inside Moodle, just in the web service API documentation. Um, you may even have custom web services already installed in your Moodle. Um, and there's just some relevant ones for core user um, uh, APIs that you have access to. Um, or enrollment web service APIs for managing enrollments or getting enrollment user information um, and classification. And as I said before, being able to authenticate doesn't guarantee you can log in. Um, so you may want to prevent just-in-time provisioning of a user for various reasons um, and rely on batch synchronization for the accounts to be created, um, such as uh, Moodle integrated with LDAP or single sign-on even might allow a user to authenticate but then knock them back because they actually don't have an account in Moodle. Um, it's usually not a problem because due to timing in your favor, there's distance in the student journey between a user's payment and enrollment, their account getting created, them getting enrolled into a course, and or them trying to access Moodle. They've usually got an account in there, so it usually doesn't matter. But it depends on you know, various reasons, sometimes good reasons, sometimes bad reasons, but they're all reasons and they're all applicable to you and your institution. But they can have implications further downstream with, as I mentioned before, uh, other, in other integrations with Moodle or third-party services, if the account exists, when does it need to exist, and so on. There's some timing questions that need to th be thought through there. But don't be intimidated. You got this. Okay. This is a, these are big questions, these are big topics, and people, they're very, they seem very nebulous, and I hate to think that I've added to that just now, but the reality is that coming to Moodle Greenfields or existing installations, whether it's a migration to Moodle, uh, rebuilding platforms or building from existing infrastructure, it's all achievable. Uh, the Moodle docs are fantastic due to the contributions from the community, all of the building work on the plugins and the way we can get these things happening. Um, there's some really great advice around here for managing a Moodle site, how to make these things fit together. Um, I strongly recommend you go look in the Moodle plugin directory, particularly around authentication and enrollment, as they work hand in hand, particularly in the LTI space. Um, and even your own Moodle site, as I mentioned earlier, you may have your own custom APIs built in, maybe built by the previous administrator, maybe the knowledge is lost in your institution going back years and years. Go and have a look. Um, and this is even just a subset. But don't panic. The strategy for success is to read the docs, not to panic, to think about carefully about your environment, break down your requirements, explore your configurations, and remember your tool sets. There's plenty of options for configuring and, configure, configuring and tailing, tailoring your Moodle instance to your unique requirements, or keeping it simple if you've got those opportunities. Community engagement is key. Ask in the forums. Build it yourself or find a partner. Thank you.